Focus is the program that you tuned to. Good afternoon, good afternoon viewers. Welcome to Emuria Television and Teso in Focus is the program that you tuned to. Welcome. It is a program where we discuss pertinent issues concerning TESO. And today in Emuria Television, we are looking at issues that have gone rounds in TESO, and particularly we are talking about Emioga. And in the studio, we have Honorable Minister. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to Emuria Television. And TESO in Focus is the program that you tuned to. <laughs> Welcome. It is a program where we discuss pertinent issues concerning TESO. And today in Emuria Television, we are looking at issues that have gone rounds in TESO, and particularly we are talking about Emioga. And in the studio, we have Honorable Minister and representing the people of Serere, or the woman member of parliament for Serere District, Honorable Helen Adoa. And she is here with us in the studio. And particularly straight away to begin with her, we are going to ask her to give an account of what they have found out in their uh, fact-finding mission in Serere as far as the Mioka is concerned. So today, Honorable, you're welcome to the show. Can you brief uh, the world? What have you found out in your findings here in Serere as far as the Mioka is concerned? First of all, the Mioka is a very good initiative that the government also is a good program, except one of the things we have noted is uh, people were not trained and sensitized on how emioga should be handled. Some of them thought it was free money. Some of them were not uh, told what percentage. Some of them did not know what you are supposed to do before you get the money. So that is where the mess has been. The majority of these people have got the money, less the expectation, but also by the time they get the money, their bank itself is overcharging them. They are overcharged every withdrawal, they charge them a lot of money. Then also, the biggest problem we have noted today here is the issue of money lenders. For you to get the 30 million, you must put 30 percent in the bank. Now, where the, if these people had the money, why would they go and borrow, get a loan? This was the question. Now, if you want to start, you have to put 10 million in the bank. And looking at these poor people, the money lenders told them, you can have my money, 10 million, but return it with interest. And where was interest coming from? From the 30 million. So these people borrowed the money and he paid the money lenders some interest. Then he too, some of the agents from the, the same bank, where the money was got from, the agents came and called them money that if you want to succeed, give me this money. Some of these people have been arrested. Unfortunately, they have not paid the money. They are not even in prison. So then it's really is what I've said that training was not given to these people. Number four, some of the leaders 
got the money, but did not give the members. And it takes off with the money. Then the others distributed this money within three or four of them, and they, they went away with the money. But also the other thing that has annoyed us most here, some of the leaders in the district seem not bothered about this problem. They don't have a passion to make these people benefit. So that's also one of the things that has annoyed us here. From a government perspective, this idea of a mioga was meant to benefit the local person, grow up in their businesses, grow up in the entities that they involve themselves in. It was a fund that was meant to revolve. But as soon as it was given to the people, there was a lockdown as a result of the second wave of COVID-19. And that a lot of beneficiaries have actually complained that their businesses were locked and hence the Mioga money has found and other ways of being utilized rather than in ways that they were meant for. As government, what do you think should be done to these people whose monies have now dwindled off and they cannot actually recover these monies and yet they need to be paying this money? Unfortunately, government cannot choose that uh, these ones did not do well, these ones did well. I think what we need to do, government should have uh, a central point here. Not only people of Mioga, generally people who got loans from commercial banks have got issues. The best government can do is to make the banks hold on for, for, from charging interest and keep the principal. Then when people give people grace period, and then after that grace period, that's when people will now do it, will start paying. Otherwise, for example, a mioga, you get a mioga, musicians got a mioga, they bow to the instruments like uh, these public address systems, and uh, the lockdown could not allow them to, to use them. And uh, they are redundant, they are just there. And, uh, and all businesses were affected. So for me, the best government can do is to help these people, let the banks not continue charging interest on these people. As a leader passionate for the development of your people in Serere, what recommendations do you give to government in terms of future, in case of future programs similar to Mioga? What should government put in place to ensure that the, project, the programs benefit the local person that is intended? I think to me, my recommendation would be this parish approach is going to solve many things because it is within the jurisdiction of many. It's a smaller scale kind of uh, place. But handling people at the district level, at the county level, is very challenging. But also in the future, let government make the beneficiaries not to have this this idea of going to the banks, different banks, the post this, you are, it is better they train them per parish. After training them per parish, they bring the money from the bank, like for example, microfinance, brings money and the beneficiaries are given money directly. If not, instead of cash, Give them what they want. If tailor, tailors want tailoring machines, why not bring tailoring machines? If they want cows, why not give the cows? If they want public address systems, why not give the public address system? It is better to give some of them. If you want to buy a vehicle, let the vehicle be brought. In that way, it reduces, it reduces the stress of uh, of the cash. <laughs> Lastly, and slightly away from Emioga, hunger has struck Teso again, and a number of people across Teso are concerned that as government, what plans do you have in place to ensure that this problem is relieved? As government, what we can do is one, the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry, and Fisheries has to give fast growing maturing seeds like you now we have realized some few rains 
for the last three days. We need to give fast maturing uh, seeds. Then it too, the Ministry of Disaster Preparedness should have some small money to rescue Teso and Karamoja, which is badly hit. We have seen people almost dying in the villages. People are faced with the hunger. You find that you can't afford to buy your family food. So for me, we would identify some families through village health teams and LOC ones to identify the badly affected people. Because even with the Serere, some parts are not bad law, but there are sub counties like three or four that are really bad law. So we would rescue people, Ministry of Disaster Preparedness, then the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry, and Fisheries giving them some uh, fast maturing seeds. But also in the future, the best is to utilize the government land by giving irrigation systems. For example, here in Serera, where we are, we have so many acres of, uh, thousands of acres in Serera research station. Government should put the tractors there, open gardens for women, for the youth. We have a lot of cassava here. We would plant. Then we have acres and square miles of irrigation scheme land in Labor. We would revive and rehabilitate that irrigation scheme and let people grow crops. The biggest challenge is to depend on the rainy season. We can no longer depend on rains. Let us, in the future, give people irrigation at a small scale. For example, there are farmers who are trying. Why not support the farmers to give them uh, a, a kind of hand dug wells, which can help them irrigate their crops and irrigate cabbages, onions, tomatoes. But the best we can do is to open government land and put a lot of cassava. As a minister directly, uh, within the docket of agriculture, what do you think the local person should do within their capacity to solve this problem without thinking about government first? The best our local people can do is to follow the advice of His Excellency here at He has been singing, he has been talking to so many of us about modern agriculture. A family can manage to fight anger with only one acre or two. Look at the people who are, who are from outside there, like UK, US. When you look at them, they have smaller homes, but everything is there. I think modern agriculture, where you put within one acre or two, you have everything. Now, you find that even your manure, you can do local manure through uh, uh, poultry keeping, and then you have few animals like uh, your cows. You dig a hole, put your your manure there. When you use that manure in your gardens, you just need a little water, and that that garden can be able to produce a lot of. The problem is the mindset. People still believe I have to depend on the rain. I have to depend on the government. I have to, but. And there, there, there are people, there are individuals with a lot of land, over 10 acres, but it's not utilizing them. So people need to be talked to. If government has not, government has to invest in mind change, mind change. For example, I want to tell you the truth. With the children staying at home with the parents, you wake up in the morning, children are sitting. Within this lockdown, the majority of people would be very rich if the mindset was, was prepared. The children would wake up in the morning and support their, their parents within one acre and change the situation. Others who have done that have done miracles. Right now, there are people who are, who are having, they are not having hunger, I mean hunger, because they utilize that small land, even in this dry season, because of the mindset. Lastly, uh, 
from uh, from me with the problems that Teso has gone through. What could be the future of education with these revolving challenges ranging from uh, unpredictable rainfall, lockdown, and education not very stable for almost a year and more now? What could be the future, you being a person who has a specific interest in education, especially of a girl child in this country? The future of this country is, is agriculture. Agriculture is going to answer everything. Let the government invest in agriculture. If government can invest in their parish land, every parish in Uganda, maybe this in few new ones in the town councils, but every parish, traditional parishes, have got a land. Government should utilize that land to better the human beings. Now, when people have improved, they are able to pay their own fees. Government cannot pay school fees for the children. And yet, right now, parents cannot afford the fees. Even if today the president opened the schools, very few parents can take back children to school. They can't afford. Even the animals have almost nowhere to feed from because the grass is dry. Maybe for the next two weeks, that's when we can realize again the green pastures. Oh, so what do you have in place now as a ministry in charge of fisheries? Uh, first of all, we had the challenges at the beginning where the relationship between the fisheries protection unit and the fishermen was not well. But at the moment, we have been able to cultivate a relationship and we no longer have any harassment. The they are now friendly forces. However, illegal fishing again has come back. And uh, I want to talk to fishers out there that please, we need to preserve, we need to take care of the resource that God has given us. I want to ask all the fishers out there that we are going to make fisheries a better docket. We are going to make sure that we register, we re-register all the boats we want to track all the boats. We want to make the fishers love their work. And we want to... The president has a lot of interest now in, in fisheries. And we are doing a lot of things to make the youth get employment out of fisheries. Fisheries is the only... Even during this lockdown, fisheries was the only docket you could get still active and it can be able to, to, to change this country. So what we just need to do is to get organized and we make sure that we want to know how many fishermen are in every landing site. And through that, we can be able to improve every landing site. We want to put value to our, our fish, we want to put value to our legs, in one way or the other. We also want to make sure that we improve and add more factories so that we are able to sell beyond. Right now, our fish is highly wanted in Congo and even outside. We now have a modern way of drying fish without causing cancer because all along we have been having a traditional way of drying the fish. Where you find that the wood you have used for for smoking is the taste of the fish. But now we have got a modern way, which is a value addition to our fish. And then of course, with the issues of uh, fish more, we want to see that fish more is handled well and can fetch some uh, revenue to the country. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you are talking about illegal fishing. The viewer may be much interested in finding out what exactly do you mean by illegal fishing? Can you break it down for now, the local listener? Now, illegal fishing is using the is using the, the the vessels or the gadgets that are not allowed. Uh, for example, you are supposed to leave the Nile patch to grow to some kilos, but the majority of our fishermen go with illegal nets like uh, tupa tupa, kamamaji. 
some of these nets, when you throw it to the lake, even if it just touches the fish without catching, the fish will die somewhere, which is very dangerous for a lake. Then there are, there are also places that should be gasseted for breeding, so that our fish adds. When the fishermen go there and attack that place and completely destroy, that means we cannot be able to get more. Then the other thing is the type of uh, the type of uh, boat that we use. The recommended is 28. When you use 22, one, you risk dying in the lake because any wind or anything to happen to you in the lake, you cannot be able to survive. Then the other thing, when you catch more fish with the, a boat of 22 or 18 size 18 or 22, you, you can easily sink because the fish is heavy than the, than the boat. So we need a bigger boat so that when the winds come, you are able to survive. Then also when you get more fish in the boat, you are still stable. So that's why it is very important for us to stop illegal fishing so that we preserve the lakes. When we, when we fish in illegal, using body fishing gears, it will destroy the fish, but also it will not make you eat tomorrow because you would have destroyed. The other thing about fishing, there are some dangerous people in the lake, some criminals, whose work is to have guns, a reason, part of the reason why fisheries protection unit is there. Like the other part of Congo, they come, beat the fishermen in Uganda, take their engines, take their boats, take their fish. So we need to protect them. We need stronger boats so that they don't push them in the lake and cause them to die. Because you are able to see, but smaller boats is very risky and you cannot be able to see at a distance. Oh, thank you so much. Maybe your last word now to our viewers and uh, particularly to the people of Serere and Teso at large. Uh, to my people of Serere, I want to thank you today, especially the leaders for coming for this Emioga dialogue or discussions. Uh, I want to encourage us. We have a lot of land. Let's utilize these uh, rains that have come without too much looking at government, because government can give you little today, but tomorrow you need something. So that is my encouragement. Then also, I want to encourage my people, COVID is real. We have been burying people in Serere for the last two weeks. We are losing people every day, at least we bury a person that has died of COVID. Even today, we are burying a person. Yesterday, we buried the two people. The other day we buried the three people. So please try your best to follow SOPs that were have been given. Let us not joke, easing this lockdown is not lifting the lockdown. We still have a challenge of COVID. And for some of you who have not gone for vaccination, please, now we have got vaccines that have been brought. Take advantage of the vaccines so that we safeguard our, our lives, but also the lives of our others. For viewers, I want to say thank you for watching uh, Emuria Television, and uh, you are watching Teso in Focus, a program where we discuss pertinent issues that affect our country, our region, and the world at large. Thank you so much for being part of this show. And uh, today, I uh, want to say we have been hosting Honorable Minister uh, Helena Doa, who is also... Thanks from uh, the, the same bank, we, where the money was got from. The agents came and called them money. Police, man. the time is now. Let's come together and sacrifice the little we have in a fight against malaria. The donor fund is over. What are you waiting for?